Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a graphic novel that I read. I am back on that graphic novel grind. Uh, I want to talk about a uh, graphic novel that is about uh, post-high school life and uh, the point of your life where you're at a crossroads. I am referring to Same Difference by Derek Kirk Kim, and this was published in 2004. For those who don't know, Derek Kirk Kim is a Korean-American writer. Uh, he grew up in, uh, in South Korea before making his way over to the United States. Uh, he's mostly known for writing graphic novels, having written Same Difference, uh, as well as um, a series of other graphic novels that I haven't really heard about before. Uh, he's also um, an animator. Uh, I believe that uh, the art that is found in this specific uh, graphic novel uh, is, is the art that he has written himself um, or drew, drawn himself. And it's very, uh, very beautiful, very interesting. I'll put it up around here during the video. Uh, but he also does animation for cartoons uh, such as Adventure Time, which I thought was pretty interesting, as well as for Axe Cop and uh, other notable TV shows. Uh, so uh, quite a, a, a diverse set of skills uh, uh, as pertaining to what he's known for. Um, but other than that, I don't know much else about Derek Kim or if he has any works like uh, lined up or anything like that because I don't think he's published anything recently. Uh, but I'll, I'll be sure to look out for it because I, I like what I read uh, in, in today's story. So without further ado, let's talk about Same Difference. I will do a summary, a little bit of an analysis, and we will move on from there. So Same Difference focuses on Simon and Nancy. Uh, they're, they're two uh, young adults um, who have, who've graduated from high school a couple of years ago um, and now they're just hanging about town in a, in a small sort of California kind of city. Uh, uh, they're hanging out with a friend, some friends at the start of the story at a pho restaurant, having a good time when Simon notes that a woman outside at a parking or at a, at a bus stop is a blind woman that he knew in high school named Irene. And although he's initially embarrassed to talk about how he knows her, uh, he talks about, uh, he, he does talk to his friends about his friendship with her, noting how they, uh, when she came to the school that he was at, they, they grew pretty close together. Uh, developing a pretty tight friendship, but he was never really interested in her in that sort of way. Uh, and so when she asked him to the Sadie Hawkins dance, uh, he made up some excuse that he wasn't going to be in town rather than being honest with her. Uh, eventually, his friends found out that he was kind of lying about that, uh, but they they didn't really call him out about it. But Irene did uh, make sure to note that she wasn't interested in him in a romantic sense. And as a result, uh, Simon felt like a real jerk about all of this, and he never confessed what actually happened to Irene. His friends encourage him to go outside and talk to her, but she gets on a bus and leaves before uh, um, before he can before he can apologize about anything. Uh, and then uh, Simon and his friends all go home. Uh, Simon lives with Nancy as a, in a in a roommate capacity. Uh, and Nancy is going through all her stuff from high school when she stumbles across some some letters that she had written uh, and received from a person named Ben Leland. Ben has been writing letters to this house uh, for quite some time. Uh, they're, uh, they're romantic letters to someone who had lived here previously, uh, kind of pathetic kind of letters um, uh, indicating that he hasn't moved on from whatever relationship that he's been in. But uh, Nancy, and Nancy says she's been responding to him, which Simon says is a bad idea. But he asserts that, or she asserts that like he's not going to actually come to the house because if he had... If he, if he was going to, he wouldn't be writing letters in the first place, indicating a lack of courage on, on his part. 
Uh, and so um, Nancy feels content in just writing letters to this person she doesn't know and uh, making it seem like a relationship might develop where one might not. Nancy decides that now is the perfect time to actually go to Pacifica where Ben lives and uh, spy on him a little bit, go to his house and see uh, what might cause a person like Ben to go and and start fawning over a, a, a woman who is not going to get back with him. And so they go there, but they can't, they can't find Ben initially. They run into some old high school classmates uh, that uh, Simon knows, and they, they note that they're having, or they're married and they have children, um, even if they are uh, townies. And uh, uh, according to Simon, they, they, um, they they weren't too kind to him in high school and so he's wondering why they're kind to him now although he doesn't voice that frustration to them he's still a little like flustered by the encounter of having met them again uh and so at, at this point to blow off some steam uh simon and nancy want to go to the beach and watch the sunset uh but uh they decide to go get some ice cream first at the grocery store and um when they when they get to the grocery store, uh, they encounter Ben, who actually works there as a cashier, as well as Irene. And Irene and Simon catch up and talk, and Irene reveals that she's engaged uh, in getting ready to get married. And uh, uh, Ben tries, to, or S Simon tries to apologize to her about what happened, but she talks about uh, a story where she broke her mother's vase, and rather than ever admit to it, she kept lying to her mother, which only frustrated, and she could eventually sense of disappointment which let her let Irene down uh, and that story seems to mesh or make sense with what uh, what's going on in Simon's head and he realizes that it's, it's possibly too late to apologize but Irene does know that he's he's sorry in some way uh, me and meanwhile uh, N Nancy buys some ice cream from Ben uh, and it's he's I think he suspects that she might be writing letters to him or something like that uh, and she feels really guilty about everything that she's doing to leave this this person on and uh after that uh simon and nancy go to the beach where they let off steam about what's what's happened throughout the story um nancy feels bad about what's happened to ben while simon feels like life is kind of be, being left behind and also frustrated with how he treated irene uh just noting that he he d he says he didn't want to go out with her because he didn't he did he didn't like her but nancy points out it's, it's probably because of his ego and he didn't want to be seen as like having to stoop so low as to date a, a blind woman uh and also noting how uh, like the two high schoolers that he had met, Eddie and Jane, seem to have their life together, but he does not. Um, and uh, that's never really resolved, that, that conflict with, with Simon. Uh, but they, they do decide like they, that they're having a great time together, and they decide to leave the, the beach and, and go back home. But before do, doing that, they drop some ice cream off at Ben's place, along with a letter apologizing to Ben for what happens. It's unclear what happens to Ben, uh, but I like to think of optimistically and hope that this uh makes him feel better knowing that uh, knowing that like uh he was being led on this whole time and now it's it's being ended there and he can move on from this relationship that he might that he, that wasn't healthy for him and that's about where the story ends there in terms of analysis Derek Kim provides us with with some some things to think about in this graphic novel uh felt really touching and really like relatable at times uh especially because one of the things that Kim is talking about here is the embarrassing moments of our lives like the things that that we're not so, quite so happy about or kind of um feel some guilt about in some way like how Simon regrets how he treated Irene um when he's when he's talking about her at the beginning of the story how he kind of led her on a little bit and um how he like he made up a lie to get out of going to a dance with her uh and um how like when when she found out she was like oh i didn't want to be in a relationship with you i just wanted to go as friends and he never really got a chance to apologize which made him makes him feel like a, lot, a sense of guilt embarrassment and inward anger after the fact which is very relatable to me because I, there are pl plenty of those moments and i'm sure you out there can feel that way too like you look back and you're like oh no i can't believe i behaved that way like why would i why would i ever do that uh i, I feel so so guilty and like it, that I don't want to be that person ever again. There's a good quote that I would like to read to you from this. 
God, she just wanted to go to a fucking dance. Just wanted to have a good time with a friend and I couldn't do that for her because I was too busy whacking off to my ego and trying to boost my battered self-esteem. And worse, to the one girl that actually showed me some romantic affection. Why am I such an asshole? It's not that hard to understand, Simon, and you don't have to beat yourself up over it seven years after the fact. You were in high school, for Christ's sakes. I remember all those confusing, misleading thoughts, too. And so that's uh, Simon and Nancy talking to one another. Simon noting that, you know, it's, it's, it was, I, I kind of let her on and I, like, I, I wasn't truthful to her for my own ego's sake. And Nancy's saying, you, you don't have to guilt yourself over this forever. Like, we grow, we change. It's seven years. Like, it wasn't right what you did then, but you're a better person now. You're, you're, you're more mature. And I think that's what Kim is getting at, that we've all matured and grown up. And yeah, we should definitely look up on those past moments and say, wow, that wasn't good what we did. But we shouldn't, you know, think about it always and, and, and be stuck in that kind of misery where we're, we're thinking about all the pa wrong things we did. We should be happy about the mature person that we're growing up to if you're one of those people who grew up into a mature person. Uh, if you're still, you know, a, a young, a, or if you're still like a, a jerk face, you know, don't, don't be happy about that. And it's interesting because Nancy is currently going through this with, with Ben uh, Leland. She's leading him on, uh, kind of manipulating this person she doesn't know into uh, into accepting this weird fake relationship that she's created. Uh, also hurting the person who used to live there because he still thinks that they're they're together in some way, and he might I don't know stalk her down the road if um, if, if something were to go wrong. But uh, she, when she sees Ben, she realizes that she's hurting an actual person, and she feels bad about that. But I think it's a sign of maturity that she just stops it right there and apologizes. And uh, rather than like maybe leading someone on forever, like like what Simon did, and and potentially hurting someone by not revealing the truth, uh, so uh, you know, kind of highlighting the embarrassing moments of our lives. I like how Derek Kim does this and uh, makes it feel really relatable in the process. Derek Kim also talks about the idea of like the crossroads of life. How you're a lot of people are at pivotal moments and they got to they're trying to figure out where they're going to go next, and it it feels sometimes it feels like you're being left behind by those who who kind of know what they're doing. Nancy and Simon both seem stuck at pivotal moments in, in their lives. Nancy is in a is in a relationship that might be going somewhere. Uh, and Simon uh, has left uh, high school and he, he I don't think he's gone to college and he's trying to figure out like what he wants to do with his animation career because Simon is kind of based on Derek Kim. Uh, and so like they're both at, at interesting moments with their lives where, where something's got to happen but nothing is, is quite happening. And so when you're at that crossroads where you're wondering what do I do next? Uh, like it, it really hurts to not have that that answer. Like I've been there before, where I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do next? What like even before getting this current job, I was like, I something's got to change. I can't be in this position where I am at forever. Uh, I I want to be at a, at a better point in my life. And how do I get there? It's 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 not always easy to see. It sometimes it's a it's a real struggle to get to those points. Uh, and uh, Simon is comparing himself to Eddie and Jane as well as. Irene, Irene, who is getting engaged, and Eddie and Jane, who, who seem to have a, a good relationship, a good life going on, at least from the outside. And uh, they, they, have, they have children, they're married, like things seem to be going well. And they seem to be better people because they're treating uh, Simon with the respect that they didn't treat him with in high school. And he, as he even as Simon even says when he when they're at the beach, like why like they their lives are, are going great. Like they might not be in a great place, but at least their lives are progressing. Uh, whereas mine seems to be stagnating. And uh, I, I, I can feel that too, like where other people's lives are progressing, they're getting married, they're having children, they're building these rich full lives. It's, it's so easy to wonder like, why isn't that happening for me? But uh, what Derek Kim might be getting at is it's not really healthy to compare yourself to people this way because although those people may be doing something, you are not them. You have a different life. And so everyone has different paths in life. And so to judge yourself by what one uh, one person is doing is not necessarily you know, fair or accurate or how things necessarily should be. But I really like how Derek Kim kind of leaves this open-ended. After his rant and his, his sort of... Um, 
uh, like uh, lament that life is kind of passing him by, Nancy doesn't reassure him at all. Uh, she just merely calls him egotistical, like self-obsessed, uh, as a friend would, and uh, just moves on and says, you know, you're fine the way you're at. But she never reassures him or tries to make him feel better about anything, neither does Derek Kim. It just left hanging there, like, uh, like, is 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 progress possible or is like is Simon in a good place and it's really left, left up to the reader to decide or or wonder if things are going to get better for him or if or if he's right in his lamentations or it's I think it's meant to get us to reflect on our own lives and consider uh exactly what what Simon and Nancy are talking about and I I like that I, I like that there's no quick reassurance to say oh Simon's going to turn out well or that things are going to be great because sometimes that, that's not the case or sometimes life is is a persistent struggle until you reach that good point and uh just reassuring someone isn't going to change that that struggle is still a struggle and then another thing that i really like about this story is uh when simon and nancy are at the beach uh simon is drawing a woody woodpecker image in the sand and uh it's a full image and quite wonderful and then as simon and nancy leave the the, the water the waves ro rush on shore and they uh they basically uh, erase the image of the woody woodpecker and uh like i think that's meant to say like what derek kim is saying is maybe all these worries ultimately mean nothing that life is life is meaningless or maybe all these worries are meaningless and so like getting off bent up been out of shape over whether or not you're married or anything like that or have kids or you, where you're at with life it, it doesn't matter what matters is the present moment like you don't live for the past don't live for the present or the future just live for the current moment with your friends and those who you love and things that you love to do um and and maybe you'll be happy. I, I think that's perhaps what, De what Derek Kim is getting at. Although I encourage you to read this and uh, really think upon that specific aspect of the comic. Because I think it's really one of the more well done aspects of this graphic novel. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Same Difference by Derek Kirk Kim. A really well done graphic novel, uh, very relatable. Like there isn't much to the story overall. It's just Derek and and or sorry Simon and uh, Nancy talking about their experiences in life and how they'd want to be elsewhere um, and that's pretty much it but I think it's it's very relatable and especially given I've been there in the past like I, I felt like this was uh, like a very necessary read um, especially if you're in your 20s and you're like wondering what are you going to do next in life I think this is this be something very valuable to have to have read so I'm going to recommend this to you out there uh, I, I managed to check this out from my local library uh, but I definitely think it's worth buying it's it's one of the better graphic novels that I've read recently um, if you read this before or you simply want to comment on something I said here do so below let's have a discussion about this graphic novel otherwise don't forget to like share and subscribe so that more people can find out about this uh, this graphic novel and this author if they don't already know about those two things. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and woody woodpecker travels. Farewell.